starting with a tree off the create shelf what I'm going to do is give you a recipe for using this tree and in the tree lab to uh, create a grass effect so starting in this left hand column a distribution of zero uh, branches per segment one and one segments this wants to be set up at 20 and 20 you have to move the bottom slider first because that's the maximum value and that's the minimum minimum value uh, branch start angle 180 branch end angle 0 and these two bottom sliders want to be set to their minimum settings so move the top one first and then we'll edit the material texture here that's being used on the uh, to, uh, trunk so that we can make the trunk invisible so just reset it to default grey set the diffuse down make it transparent now that may appear that it's transparent but what you want to do is make sure it's set to blend transparency because on normal it can interfere with haze settings you can sometimes see sort of a ghostly outline of the shape so that is now properly transparent I'll just check out of that and then we we'll go on to this um, the scale is fine at 4, the number of leaves is fine at 4, but the shape wants to be um, an Austrian pine, but that's, uh, no, oh yes, there it is, pine, Austrian, it's the other way around. So, pine, Austrian, and you want it to be set to coniferous, and you don't need any gravity, you don't need any randomness, now you can see how that's made it flat, and for the material for this uh, leaf, we want edit, reset it to default grey and make this sort of a, a greeny browny colour something like that and give it a transparency of 65 so that's our setup for this and when you've done this you should end up with something I'm just going to enlarge it that looks a bit like this now if you put it just slightly below the ground the branches uh, because otherwise the leaves will point down we've got the, the the leaves on their edge so the ones that are pointing up make the sort of grass effect as they're coming out you've got to imagine the other side of the pine leaf uh, because it sprays out in all directions is going underground so that's the idea behind that so enlarge it a bit and then position it just so that the top of it is, is, is under the surface of the ground and then then it should look like the the leaves are spouting out of the ground okay I'm going to position that underneath where the camera is and lift the camera up a bit right now the, the, the trick with this is oops I've gone into the editor double clicking on it twice is to get it to fairly dense underneath where the camera is oops we've gone down too low now a bit fiddly to line up okay right and then you can see the, the effect sort of happening now where we've got a bit of uh, complexity. Now I need to su choose a suitable ground material for this sit on uh, to to sit on. So I'll select the plane and um, edit the material. I'm going to choose one of the shared materials you can find at uh, rice5.com, which I made, and it's called uh, Lincolnshire Wolds. So that's just something that looks a bit like um, fields, but obviously it'll it'll benefit if we can add some some of this grass on top of it. I'm going to change the sky to, to one I made a while ago but we'll have to modify the settings to uh, to, to come up to date with with new knowledge so it's called Utah Blue and it's in daytime and I had a bit of, in, of an issue here where I've not set the intensity fully up at 100 and that will make it more efficient if I do that so I'll just do render in scene check out of that. So r by making the um, material transparent for the grass this will have the advantage that some light will get through it so even though we've not got a very complex lighting setup the uh, the transparency is going to going to help the sun looks quite bright over in that corner you see I want the angle fairly low so you can take advantage of the fact that the light can travel through the material so at this stage I got can take this grass effect and copy and paste it now and move it forward in front of the camera to, to fill the fields up and as it goes further away you could probably get away with uh, slightly larger leaves so I can make that one five and then it'll make the grass look a bit th thicker in the distance don't go up crazy because th obviously the, the grass will get th 
physically thicker as well as larger so I'll produce some more I'll just edit those and uh, I'll make that six the idea being to, to sort of creep the grass towards the horizon but also enlarge it a bit all the trees you can select them with that control there you experiment with lifting them up perhaps or scaling them up and then you'll have to lift them up again because because we're of the origins position to, to sort of thicken the effect up and if you wanted to get to the horizon then you get closer to the surface but there's a drawback here because of the physical thickness of the the leaf effect so you don't want to get too close doing that right I'll, I'll put some more in the distance and and make those slightly larger just to build up what we've got here I'm gonna risk a bigger number I'll try to uh, scale 10 and see how that looks so I'd ideally want to just cover that bit of the horizon up somewhat okay um, lift it up slightly I don't want to create a, a ridge too much in the shadow region underneath it obviously you can hide hide the horizon a bit perhaps with some haze but uh, it's not ideal doing that it's already quite bright so I'm just lowering the camera at the risk of uh, getting a bit too close to this this grass in the foreground I think I'm, I'm more or less at the limit there for, for in terms of uh, saving a bit of render time I'll change the document setup to a one-to-one -one. and um, I'll introduce an object from the library just to uh, to help show off the effect that's uh, being produced here I'll use this uh, bunny from the Stanford scanning repository that uh, Horo kindly uh, converted for me I'll enlarge him a bit the the idea being because now I've got proper 3D grass you can see the effect of the the, the bunny object sitting in the grass so I'll sit him down in the grass a bit um, modify the material I'll use one from our um, uh, metals too so it can reflect some of the environment because the the lighting is not really that complex because we've only got one major light source and the bit of the ground showing through I better check the ground actually because it's got a bit of ambient output in this channel so let's see what the ground is doing it has got some ambient response so I'll just get rid of the ambient response in the ground and provide a little bit more bluish light from the sky down remembering that's just a straight down light from above that um, doesn't cast shadows as such, it only responds to the, the bump effect. So, there you go, that's uh, sort of working. I'm going to uh, zoom in a bit more on the, the rabbit. Uh, let's have a look. That is, uh, the grass is coming up there. Okay, so, no, not very not very realistic <laughs> looking rabbit, but never mind that. So that's uh, that's about it really, that's a quick video set up on this idea I had to try and create a sort of uh, grass effect in Bryce using uh, trees instead of using, as, as I did before, a material that was on a terrain, which I, I don't know which is going to be most efficient because I've not been able to compare the two and it'd be difficult to uh, to come up with a comparison between these two, obviously because the using such radically different approaches you'd get different levels of ground cover so I'll just let this render out it's only going to take a few seconds but I imagine the anti-aliasing pass because of the high amount of quantity of noise in this uh, image is going to take a while so perhaps regular renderings won't be the most efficient in the long run we'll see how it looks in a minute well, I don't think that turned out too bad for a quick setup there's uh, it's fair to of complexity there and as I anticipated the uh, AA pass was rather sluggish in that respect but uh, I suppose I'll go on to test this and see what it's like with uh, the premium render mode because obviously that render engine operates in quite a different way and uh, tends to be a bit more efficient in terms of uh, the anti-aliasing and will work with uh, effects like soft shadows but there'll be temptation then to introduce perhaps better lighting and depth of field to get the this foreground out of focus perhaps and give, give it more of a focus on the model but that's uh, that's experiments for another time so that's the end of the uh, tutorial hope you found that interesting hope you'll have a go at this effect